Hello, hello, everybody. How is everybody this evening? And welcome to the pre read shortcuts OTC revision question and answer session. So, last week we smashed it out with the pediatrics, and this week we're going to smash it out with respiratory. So, we're going to be going through some different questions and we're going to go through each of the answers. Okay, so. Um, if you're here, give us a hello, give us a hello or give us a like, press on the like button on our or on our amazing video. So um, in terms of questions, what we're going to do, we're going to go through each of the questions um, and then I'm going to time you one minute for each question. OK, so in each of those one minute, I was going to time you one minute. You're going to basically going to put, uh, make a note. OK, make sure you have some pen and paper. Make a note of your uh, answers. Marvin um, is will then be joining us and he's going to go through in terms of our OTC and MEP course. Essentially, kind of, it's going to be a new course that's going to be coming out for you guys and essentially how you can actually join that course. And then we're going to go through each of those um, answers to each of the questions. For each question, I will explain why that is the answer and I'll also explain why it wouldn't be any of the options. OK, so if you're here and you're ready to actually do some questions, give us a yes or give us a hello in the comments. OK. Yes, yes, do. OK, so are we all ready? So we're going to let's go. Let's go. Let's go. OK, so what we'll do is that we're going to move on to the first question and I'm going to time you for one minute, okay? Yes, go, go, go. Okay, one minute starting now, guys. No answers just yet, guys. We're going to wait till the end. Okay, that's one minute up. We're going to move on to the next question. And one minute starts now. Okay, one minute is up for that question. So we're going to move on to the next question, guys.
Okay, guys, that's your one minute up. Let's go on to the next question. Okay, that's your one minute up. We need to go on to the next question. Okay, and that's your one minute up. We're going to move on to the next one, guys. There's two more questions coming up. Okay, guys, this is the last question coming up now. Okay, guys, boom. Okay, so you've actually smashed out seven questions in about seven minutes. Okay, so how did you guys find those questions? If you thought they're okay, just put a thumbs up. If you had any concerns, that's okay. We're going to go through um, after Marvin talks about our new OTC and MEP course, like the most amazing course that's actually going to be coming out. Um, is that we'll go through each of the questions and we'll actually, I will go through step by step. Okay, they were okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. If they were okay, that's great. That's great. As long as they weren't terrible, that's the most important thing. Okay. Um, so taken to <laughs> um so um, you know, kind of like as long as you don't think they were terrible, that's you know, kind of like that's 
that's that's fine you know it's just like you know it, it does take some time to prepare for the exam if you thought they were okay that's a smashing that's an absolutely smashing start so i'm going to hand over to the most ama amazing marvin who is going to be talking through our new otc and mep course hello everybody hello hello can you hear me if you can hear me please type a one type a one if you can hear me clearly please type a one i'll, I'll just i'll just take it away by that comment by crop <laughs> 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 He's a legend, Cop King. Um, <laughs> hi, you guys can hear me. Please just type a one very quickly. I'll just do this very quickly and then I, um, let Georgina continue with the answers for all of you. Um, very important. OTC is very important. As you guys know, you get um, now you're getting more and more questions in your exam. And um, the respiratory system is absolutely important as well, right? Not just for your exam, but cold and flus. This is the season. Okay, please learn, especially those age, age ranges and things are quite challenging. Which medications? What's the age restrictions? But I'll let the lovely Georgina do that for you because she's the expert. I'm just here to remind you guys about what I said um, last week. Um, as you guys know, the course is starting in February. I don't want any of you guys to miss out on this course. It will be fantastic. Not only do we have the lovely Georgina doing this course with you, she's going to give you 100%. I'm there as well supporting you, making sure that we give you the best um, resources so you could pass the exam. So, hey, here's what I've got to tell you. Um, 7th of Feb February is the date you want to put down. Um, we've got OTC and MEP, right? So it's 9, um, well, 7 to 8. And on both days, Tuesday and Wednesday, you have OTC 1 and MEP. Please, please, please join the course if you can. Good news is all of you on the combo course, you get 50% off. And then those of you not on the combo course, that's fine. We'll always do something to support you as well. So you're going to get 30 pounds off each course. So um, we just want to make sure that everyone is able to get something from this course, okay? So we're really making it easy and cheap. And remember, it's a live course as well. So it's not just an automatic course or one that's been recorded. You'll be able to do this course in real time like we're doing right now. You'll be able to interact with Georgina, ask your questions, and make sure that you get the best out of the course. It is quite a long course as well. It's about 10 weeks. So we're going to give you a lot of information and content. Um, so what is covered in the course? Um, every single thing, right? Everything that is part of your GPS framework will be covered, right? So we've got a number of webinars and there are the topics for you. So um, last week, we just touched a little bit on pediatrics. This week, we're looking at respiratory system. So perhaps next week um, for the free session, we're going to look at um, ophthalmology. So your eyes, otitis, external media, dry eyes and all of that, conjunctivitis. Georgina will go through all of these. But these are all areas that get tested in your exam. So we're going to have a quick session here next week. And then for the course, you'll go into more details uh, with Georgina. So that's the whole outline for you. So you know exactly what you're getting. It's going to be quite a lot. Um, I just want to highlight this um, webinar 10, which is the last webinar. Um, it talks about OTC interactions. You get loads of questions in your exam on interactions, especially these OTC with pop meds. So um, it's definitely one course that you really want to attend. It's going to make your life a lot easy. So uh, in terms of presentation, we know people remember things best when, like Georgina mentioned last time, we know that you remember things when the fun, the interactive, colorful notes, pictures. And that's what we're trying to do with you um, for this course. Okay, make it really easy. So these are some slides that you can expect to get with Georgina. This girl is on fire, basically. <laughs> 24-7 developing this course. She is always, always 24-7 working to make things better for you. So that's a sort of thought, for instance, that those are the kind of slides that you're going to get. Very, very easy, compact, colorful, easy to remember, things that come up in your exam, okay? So all of this, I just want to show you that that's literally it for me. Um, the final thing I was going to say is what I mentioned earlier. This is for everyone, and we want everyone to get some benefits out of this course. So because of that, we've literally done it totally half price for all combo course students. So it's buy one, well, buy one, get two free, okay? So you pay for one course, which is $199, and you're going to get OTC and MEP, live courses, lots of hours, interactive, all the way, okay? If you're not on the combo course, that's fine. That's fine. We'll do something for you as well. So obviously, you'll be able to get the course for $1.99 each, but we're going to knock off £30 from each course so that you too can enjoy yourself. Um, so everyone benefits. Everyone's going to have a laugh. Everyone's going to benefit from this course. Um, in terms of the payment options, we try to make it easy as well. So we've gone through different installments for you. So um, if you wanted to break that down, you could pay literally three installments of like six or six pounds and um, all of that for you. OK, so let me not take much of your time. That's just what I want you guys to know. If you want to join the course, that's February. Places are going fast. 
it's a live course, so we have limited places because it's a live course, okay? This lady is amazing, but she cannot take too many people live. Then it's not going to be as personal as we want it to be. So um, this is the barcode. Please scan this QR code if you want to get the course, if you want to get more information. All you have to do, scan the QR code and then get all the information you need. You can also book a talk with us on the website if you want to speak to us directly. So that's it from me. I'm going to pass it over to Lord Georgina to continue with your answers. Amazing, amazing. So first of all, guys, um, if we go on to question one, so this is essentially just testing to see if you know which medications actually cause a sore throat, okay? So for question number one, um, did you guys want to invite to put your answers in the comments um, so put your answer in the chat um, or in the comments in terms of what answer did you get for question number one? So while you're putting down your comments, just for Manjot, because I know Manjot's got a question there. Um, I finished work late. Will it be recorded? Just like the combo course, Manjot. It's going to be live, but after the session, um, within 24 hours, you will get a replay video, which you're going to have access all the way to your exam. Okay? So even if you miss a session, it's fine. you get the recording. So let's see your answers. Let's see your answers to the first question. Should I put the question up, Georgina? Yes, please. Let's remember? please. Okay. I know, but I did see some eager beavers putting some A's down. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. So, um, so some like essentially everyone so far has actually put down as A um, as their answer. So the correct answer to this question is A, which is carbimazole. Okay. Something which is absolutely critical that you need to know for the GBHC exam. And it's not just OTC. Yes, smashed it. Well done. A is the correct answer. Amazing, amazing. It's the fact that you need to know which medicines cause medicine induced sore throat. Okay. How I've always remembered this when I was studying is that I remembered it as the four C's, but don't ever forget about sulfur, okay? That sounds a bit, a little bit crazy, okay? So the four C's, okay? So you've got clozapine, so neuroleptics. So uh, clozapine is most likely to cause medicine-induced sore throat. Carbimazole, as you can see, that's the answer to this question. We've got cytotoxics and we've got captopril um, but we've also got sulfur containing medications so for example sulfur salazine okay they can all cause medicine induced sore throat which is essentially the medical term is a granulocytosis and that's just the fancy medical term to say that a patient has very low neutrophil count which means that they are at a high risk of very very severe um severe infections so um, so essentially, um, does anyone else know about the other potential signs and symptoms of a essentially kind of like of blood disorders? Because the GBHC, they won't just say sore throat. Sometimes they can be a little bit sneaky and they could be like, oh, Mr. Buckle could have a sore throat and X, Y, Z symptom. Um, so it's also important to know about the other signs and symptoms of blood disorders. S smashed it. Well done. I see a comment here for fever and bruising spot on yeah so okay unexplained bleeding bruising blood you know blood spots okay um fever and malaise all of which yes influenza like symptoms smashed it well done all of which are signs of blood disorders okay um and you always have to make sure that you know which medicines can actually cause those blood disorders so how i remember it is the four c's but never forget about sulfur containing medications and so never forget about sulfur but i always remember the four c's that's how i always remembered it in my head when i was studying okay so is everybody okay with this question and then we can move on to question number two and we can discuss um essentially the answers to that okay so if no one has any questions i can't see any questions so far we'll move on to question number two if that's okay marvin smashed it okay so what did you guys get for question number two put your answers in the chat guys or put them in the comments and then we can discuss the answer from there this is quite an interesting question actually uh, because it's really important to know the difference between the common cold and flu 
Yes, smashed it. D, D, D. Well done. Well done to everybody who has put D because D is the correct answer. Yes, so D, so a patient who has a fever, muscle aches, pain, and is bed bound. Okay, so it's really important to know the differences between the common cold um, and flu, and not just for the pre reg exam because people always kind of like use the two terms together, don't they? So people can often walk into the pharmacy and say they've got flu. Okay, but the reality is there are main differences between the common cold and flu. Okay, so often flu, you would be bed bound, it's very debilitating, you wouldn't be able to get out of bed. Um, and there's also one also important thing to remember is that in terms of flu season as well. So flu season is what December to March, okay, but you can get a common cold at any point in the year. It doesn't have to be December and March, you can get the common cold any time of the year summer colds you know kind of like they can happen okay um some other key things to know the difference between common cold and flu is the onset okay flu literally it just hits you okay if you pick up the flu those symptoms come on you fast they hit you so hard but colds okay they have a they have a slower onset you know we've all we've all had a cold in our life you know kind of like you can get a tick you can get kind of like the niggling at the back of your throat you can have a sore throat then you can have like you can be a little bit feel a bit snotty where you have a bit of a bunged up nose or you're sneezing or a runny nose the onset of the symptoms are quite slow in the common cold but with the flu the symptoms just hit you in the face okay um also the type of cough that you have is also very characteristic and different between the two so in a cold we often, it's kind of like a phlegmy cough, you know, it's a productive cough, we cough up phlegm, okay, that's what happens, okay, but in a flu, it is often a non-productive cough, it's often a dry cough in flu, okay, and also kind of like, like we said already, um, in terms of flu, you're often bed bound, you can have shivering, you can have chills, there can be muscle pain, fever, okay, so that is the reason why D is the correct answer to this question so well done everybody you've got it right you've all smashed it well done well done so if there isn't any other questions about this particular question we'll move on to question number three and we can discuss this as well this guys is really really important to know this okay you need to know this this came up in my exam so first of all if you guys are okay, just put your uh, answers in the chat for me. So put you'll put down in the comments. Well done, well done. So we've got A, A. Yes, I can go back to question number two after this question, if that's okay. Okay, so um, in terms of we've got a, 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 well done, well done. Okay, this is something that you guys just need to know. Okay, so no more than 720 milligrams of pseudoephedrine, 180 milligrams or, um, of ephedrine at any one time, and they cannot be sold together. That is an absolute no-no. So just an extra bonus question here, guys. Does anybody know the reason why this legal restriction is in place? Bit of an interesting one, actually. I didn't know this until um, I think I think about fourth year at uni. I learnt this. Didn't know beforehand. If you don't know, Breaking Bad is a clue. That is a very good program. Yes, Crystal Meth. <laughs> That's it. That's why I said Breaking Bad is a very good TV show. <laughs> very good tv show but you know kind of like they make crystal meth so that was my clue but yes it can be misused to make crystal meth okay and that is the reason why the legal restrictions are in place okay so in this sort of question it's um the gbhc would be quite common that you know kind of like to try and confuse you a little bit so you can see in b essentially they've got the numbers the wrong way around they've got the 180 and the 720 the wrong way around um you know, kind of like for C, you know, it's a total wrong quantity of 220 milligrams of ephedrine. That's just completely wrong whatsoever. Um, you know, come out no more than 60 milligrams of ephedrine. Once again, that's, as you know, it's the wrong quantity. Same with the 120 of the ephedrine in the option D. Um, and it's the same again in E. 
Um, and they can also be a little bit sneaky. So let's say, for example, t- what two of the options could be no more than 720 milligrams of pseudoephedrine or 180 milligrams of ephedrine at any one time. But one option could say that they can be sold and the other option can say... Um, <laughs> Um, so um, one option can say that the pseudoephedrine um, and ephedrine can be sold at the same time and the other one can say it cannot. OK, so just be careful of all of those things. Yeah. Buying multiple packs from different pharmacies. Yeah. OK, people will do that. OK, it's the same with Cocodamol. OK, patients do it all the time. OK, but the most important thing is, is that you do not sell it in your pharmacy as the responsible pharmacist. Just just. No, no, don't make, don't make them, don't, don't, don't help them make crystal meth. Okay. Don't let, don't let them do another Breaking Bad part two or something. (laughs) Okay. So it is really important for you guys to know the legal restrictions in terms of pseudoephedrine and ephedrine. It is really, really, really important. Okay. So guys, we're going to go on to question number four. Actually, no. I promise I said I'll go back to question number two. I lied. I'm so sorry. Can we please go back to number two? I was asked to go through the other uh, other options, wasn't I? Yes. Okay. So, um, A, patient who is feeling hot but no raised temperature with a sore throat and a cough. That could just be as simple as the common cold. Okay. Um, a patient who is experiencing facial pain, nasal congestion, and a slight headache. This is an interesting one, guys. Can anybody think of what this potentially could be? Any ideas? It doesn't matter whether you think you're right or wrong. Just whack it in the comments and we can discuss it. Boom. Sinusitis. Well done, guys. That's it. Well done, well done. It is sinusitis, okay? Okay, then you've got patients with rhinorrhea, nasal congestion, cough, and frequent sneezing. Once again, I personally think, you know, kind of like common cold symptoms, okay? Um, patient coughing up white colored phlegm. What could that be? So if the phlegm was like, if the phlegm was white, green or yellow, what would kind of like your thought pattern be with those kind of like sort of phlegm colours? And the most important thing, if you had a, um, if someone, let's say, for example, I was coughing up some phlegm and it was like a rusty brown colour. Okay. If it was a rusty brown colour, what would that tell you? Okay, so rusty brown would actually tell you that there's um, kind of like something like pneumonia is going on. Okay, um, white colored phlegm that can happen in patients with COPD. Um, you can also cough up, you know, kind of the lights, kind of like a white phlegm in a common cold. You can cough up green phlegm. Okay, often patients think, you know, if they're coughing up kind of like a green phlegm, they think it's bacterial, but in fact, green phlegm can also be kind of like viral. Okay, um, yellow, I would probably think it's more bacterial. If it's more green, I would say it's more viral. If it's yellow, I would probably think it's more bacterial. Okay, so does that help in terms of going through the other options in question number two? Just give me a thumbs up or a yes if you're happy with that, and then we can move on to question number four. Yep, amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, right, Marvin, is it okay if we go to question number four, pretty please? Okay, so guys, for question number four, what did you guys get for this? Just put your answer in the chat, guys, and then we can go through it step by step again.
Okay, so we've got one D. Is there any other any any other ones? Because it's really important to know your ages for OTC medication. Very, very important. Was there any other ones? Um, any other answers apart from D? Okay, we've got some E's, we've got some E's. Okay, so anybody who has put E, well done. That is the correct answer. Okay, but we're going to go through each of these options. Okay, so first of all, um, so first of all, Sudafed, okay, we know kind of like um, is a part of the, um, the decongestion. Um, the Sudafed nasal spray actually contains the ingredient. I think it's, uh, I can never pronounce this right. I'm a pharmacist. I can still never pronounce this right. It's called xylometallozine. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I kind of like that's a nasal decongestion. Okay. So first of all, Option A, we can rule option A out because Sudafed is not a POM medication. You can literally go to Tesco's or Sainsbury's or if you're posh, go to Waitrose, <laughs> you know, kind of like um, and buy this literally on the shop counter. OK, Sudafed nasal spray is a GSL medication, which means that you can buy it in any premises, any kind of like business. You can buy it anywhere. OK, so first of all, we can rule out option A is not a POM medication. OK. Um, OK. Offer an alternative product as there are better alternatives to treat a cold which are safer to use. Um, okay, so there isn't anything particularly dangerous about Sudafed nasal spray. You know, kind of like there's no particular reason why this patient wouldn't be able to have, um, you know, kind of like um, Sudafed nasal spray. Although I'm going to use this to actually ask you another question, guys. Can you think of any cautions or contraindications with decongestions? Because this is also important for you guys to know. Well done. The age restriction is 12. Spot on. So let's say, for example, if I had really high blood pressure, let's say Rebecca had a blood pressure, let's say her blood pressure, I don't know, her systolic was um, like her systolic blood pressure was like 160 or 180 or something mad. Yeah. Hypertension, boom, and diabetes, they're cautions. OK, um, so they are cautions. OK, and someone also put down here saying, isn't rebound congestion a problem? You're spot on. You're correct. That's why the maximum duration is seven days. If you use it longer than seven days, you get rebound congestion. It's called something really fancy like rhinitis medicamentosa, but rebound congestion, okay? So the maximum duration is seven days for this reason. We know it's not a POM medication. Rebecca doesn't actually have any cautions or contraindications. Rebecca doesn't take monoamine oxidase inhibitors, okay? Because monoamine oxidase inhibitors and decongestions, boom, a hypertensive crisis, okay? And we do not want patients to have that, okay? Um, so option C is just not appropriate because, you know, kind of like the maximum duration is seven days and not 10 days. And the age at which you can actually sell Sudafed is 12 years plus. Um, and it's not 18. You don't have to be 18 to buy Sudafed nasal spray. Yeah. You can take a break. It's just, let's say, for example, if you start using it, um, let's say, for example, if you use it for like two weeks, you're going to have, um, you will have like a, re you will have a rebound. And okay, you would be like rhinitis medicamentosa. But let's say, for example, if you use it for like five to seven days and you took a bit of a break away from it and then you start using it again, that's fine. You just cannot continuously use the Sudafed nasal spray. Otherwise, it's just going to give you that rebound. Okay. So amazing, guys. So I hope that actually helps you um, in terms of this question. Um, also, I forgot. Um, no, that's correct. The tablets don't give you rebound congestion. It's the nasal sprays that give you the um, the repound congestion. So it is only the nasal sprays. 
Um, one thing I forgot to tell you guys in terms of the interactions between decongestants and the monoamine oxidase inhibitors is that this interaction can actually persist for up to two weeks after the treatment of the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Okay, and also avoiding pregnancy. Avoiding pregnancy as well. So if everybody's happy, we're going to move on to uh, the next question, which is question number five. Boom. Okay. So with question number five, guys, what was your answer? And then um, after this, when you put your answer down, can you please tell me what you think is wrong with this patient, with her symptoms? I mean, Okay, we've got some answers. We've got some C's and we've got some H's. We've got some more H's. Uh, dry eyes or allergy. It would actually be allergy. So the patient's having allergic conjunctivitis here. So um, someone put the option C and I can see why you put the option C. I understand that. It's an antihistamine, isn't it? Um, in terms of what would be particularly best, what would be particularly best in terms of um, if someone had, if a patient had allergic conjunctivitis, is to use sodium chromoglycate. Does anybody know how how basically the mechanism of action of sodium chromoglycate is? So, in terms of how was it really effective for allergic conjunctivitis? And also, I forgot to say, sorry, H is the correct answer. So sodium chromoglycate is the correct answer. But sorry, <laughs> in terms of, yes, it's a mast cell stabilizer. Boom, boom, boom. It's really, really effective at um, treating allergic conjunctivitis. Okay, it's absolutely, yes, boom. Yes, inhibits mast cell deregulation. Spot on. Well done, guys. You are correct in terms of your mechanism of action. As a result, it is really, really good for... Um, you know, kind of like allergic conjunctivitis, you know, I rely on this stuff in summer because my God, I'll be a puffy mess, mess if I didn't have this stuff. But it's really good. Okay, so these eye drops are actually very, very effective um, for treating allergic conjunctivitis. Okay, often you will find that some patients actually take an antihistamine tablet and, um, and the eye drops as well. Some patients do actually need to um, do need to have both. Interesting question here. How do you distinguish between dry and allergies? Okay. Biggest thing about dry eyes is that often you would wake up with your eyes are going to be sticking, the eyelids can be sticking together. Um, you would often um, have that most typical classic thing that can happen is that your vision will be blurred, then you blink, and then your vision will be back to normal. Okay. You will still have lots of watering of the eye as well, um, because with the watering um, of the eyes, essentially kind of like your eye is trying to, re, you know, kind of like recompensate for the fact that it's dry, so it's trying to over lubricate the eye. Um, so the key things that so the key things in terms of how you can tell the difference um, between um, allergic conjunctivitis. Um, and dry eye is that dry eyes you're not going to have any like rhinitis symptoms okay so patients are often going to have hay fever signs symptoms you know like a sniffly nose etc sneezing they can have hives um but um in terms of dry eyes they can have that um, itchy gritty sensation in the eyes the vision will be blurred they blink their vision goes back to normal um and their eyelids will often be stuck together in the morning okay um so 
does that help you to, in terms of distinguish between dry eyes and allergic conjunctivitis? I hope that has helped. Yeah, amazing. Okay. Okay. So if everybody's okay. Um, so in terms of we're going to move on to question number six. Okay. So this is a 28 year old man with high blood pressure. That's the key part and is suffering from nasal congestion. So guys, what did you get as your answer? Put your answers in the comments, put your answers in the comments. Boom, we've got B. B, well done. Boom, boom. Okay, so B is the correct answer here. Okay, and the key part is, is that we have a 28-year-old, I was about to say female patient then, obviously I can't read today. <laughs> a 28-year-old um, male patient who has high blood pressure, okay? And we said earlier that the um, pseudoephedrine is cautioned with patients with high blood pressure is actually best to be avoided just to be on the safe side because we don't want to be making that patient's blood pressure any higher. Um, and so Beconase is a, is a nasal spray that can be used for nasal congestion, um, can be sold to those over the age of 18. Um, they can be... Um, that's going to be like the best option for this patient for nasal congestion. Okay, is everybody happy with that? So the key part here was the high blood pressure, okay, with pseudoephedrine is, is, a, is, a, is a bit of a no-no, okay, it's caution like we said earlier, so therefore beconase nasal spray would be the better option for this patient in this case. Okay, so if everybody's okay with that, I cannot see any questions so far. Um, so we're going to roll on to our last question of the evening, which is question number seven. Okay, so guys, put your answers in the chat. Put your answers in the chat. Is Beckenay's not only licensed for hay fever? I thought you I thought it could be used for more, but I will double check for you. Because you can also have generic baclometasone as well. So let's check that for you whilst you guys are putting your answers in the chat. I have just double checked, guys. It can also be used. It can also be used um, for nasal congestion as well. So I thought it could, but I thought I'd best double check myself for you guys. I don't want to be accidentally telling you the wrong thing. Um, but it can also be used for um, nasal congestion as well. Okay. Okay, okay. So, right. So. This woman is working late shifts, okay? You've all smashing it. Okay, so you're all smashing it with basically your answer is A, so which is acrobisnine, is going to be a less, is a is part of a non sedating, um, well, the, I always call antihistamines non sedating and sedating, okay? There, even though the product license says, oh, it still may cause a little bit of sedation, but basically it goes to non sedating and sedating. That's still how my brain works with it. 
Um, so acrofistine, cetirizine, and loratadine are kind of like the less drowsy and chlorphenamine. If this lady had chlorphenamine, so pyritol, I reckon she'll probably be asleep during her shift. So that is the reason why um, chlorphenamine wouldn't potentially you know kind of like wouldn't be suitable and it's the same with promethazine promethazine is an antihistamine okay but it's used kind of like um you know kind of a fenagon for kind of like insomnia and travel sickness and so once again biggest side effect of that is drowsiness we don't want this lady to be going to sleep during her work i don't think her boss will be very impressed with that <laughs> so guys that's it so the answer here is a does anybody have any questions or any concerns about question number seven so that's absolutely fantastic guys you've absolutely smashed it well done well done can beckonase cause high blood pressure if it becomes systemic it's very it's quite unlikely it will become systemic um so i think it'll be it'll be a bit of a different story if they were popping down the steroid tablets um but it wouldn't be Beckonase nasal spray. I wouldn't worry about patients who have high blood pressure because it's kind of like it's a um, with a nasal spray. In terms of not much of that drug whatsoever is actually going to go to like the general circulation. If that makes any sense, I'm not expressing myself very clearly tonight, am I? But in terms of you're not going to get too, you're not going to get much systemic absorption from a nasal spray. Does that does that help you answer that question? If we have acrovestine and loratine, which be, which would be the uh, least drowsy, the GBHC won't be that mean. They won't be that mean. Trust me, they won't be that mean. Um, if they did, okay, I would put loratadine because loratadine is meant to be the super super least drowsy. So if you did have that option, the answer I would probably say would be loratadine because you know kind of like it is recommended that it's meant to be kind of like <laughs> it's meant to be like the super least drowsy but i don't think the gbhc are going to be that mean because you know at the end of the day <laughs> yeah that's very true <laughs> um but in terms of like the gbhc are not going to be that mean trust me they want you to pass okay they don't want pre-registered be like hang on a second you've got two answers here both are actually correct so they don't want discrepancies in their questions um so they won't be that mean but if it did ever come up if it ever 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 did happen put loratadine <laughs> okay guys okay so is there any other questions guys thank you thank you ever so much for this evening and remember to sign up to a brand new live um otc and mep course that is starting in february great stuff the lovely georgina that was amazing learned quite a lot from your session um, um ria is asking what the special offers for the otc package be available for next year's package um, what is next year's package? So um, next year, we just have one course, which is in February. That's the only OTC and MEP course we're going to do live all the way to those doing the exam in June. After that, we won't do any live course. Um, those doing the exam, say, in November, will probably just have access to recordings. But the only live course that we're going to do, the only live course is going to be um, Georgina doing MEP and OTC. The combo course is part and part. So it's automated and live Q&As. Periton is most drowsiness causing, generally tends to be the one, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you have, you have Periton, then you have all the others. <laughs> yes. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. It's been a pleasure. Does anyone have any questions before we disappear? I want to make sure you answer all your questions, either on OTC or on the combo course or the OTC course. Please ask. Yamna, are all the congestant patients indicated in pregnancy what is that are all the congestant oh contraindicated 
It's, yeah, oh. best to avoid because uh, I think there has been some studies on fetal abnormalities. Yeah, interesting. I think it's only been mild. I believe the fetal abnormalities have only been mild, but I believe that has happened with decongestion. So therefore, avoid, 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 avoid. Just Definitely. No. <laughs> And you don't want you don't want them also having a raised blood pressure when they're pregnant as well. So yeah, watch out for that as well. Preeclampsia is not good for pregnant ladies, and this can make it worse. Great stuff, great stuff. Any more questions, lovely people? Before we disappear, before I let Georgina go have a lovely dinner. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, so we will definitely stop there. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. Um, you could always email us. You could send us a message. You could book a call, a free call on our website. Let me just put a website there for those of you that want to get in touch. It's freeredshortcuts.com. So with this, um, on this website, you can book a free call. And you, if you have any questions you want to ask us, please do feel free. We're always here to help. Next week, we're going to have the same session. But next week, we're going to focus on a different topic. So what do we say was going to be? It's going to be with the eyes anyway. So that's one that generally comes up in a lot of exams, conjunctivitis and things. So um, next week, we're going to look at the eyes. Well, it depends on Georgina. She will do what <laughs> <laughs> she will do. Um, Yomna is asking, how often do you have these sessions? So um, these sessions, when the course starts, is going to be in February. We're going to have them every week for 10 weeks. So it's going to take you all the way from February to around mid-April. So it's a good time preparing for your exam. Um, we're doing the free sessions now, but um, the last one is going to be next week. And then um, that's it. We may do some again in January, maybe all, um, MEP this time. But um, I think the last OTC will be next week based on how things go. Um, any more questions? Lovely people. Thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this session. Share the video. And um, thank you all. Georgina, thank you so much. It's been very informative. <laughs> Sonia, thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. You. And then um, when you actually, can I say one thing? Okay, I want you guys. When I want to see your results, I want those 100 percent in counts and 98 percent in clinical. Actually, I want you to get that extra two percent that I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Someone's asking, um, can you tell us the session beforehand? So um, we can tell you. Yes, Georgina, should we go for um? Let's do eyeballs. Homology, right? So, right. So, we're going to do the eyes. We're going to do the eyes next week. So, things like your conjunctivitis, look at all of these. We're going to do that next week. Okay. Eyeballs, as she says. Eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what day? It's going to be the same day to prevent any confusion. It's going to be Mondays. OT, what? What's today? Today's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused already. Right. OTC Wednesdays. OTC Wednesdays. Seven o'clock Wednesdays. Tune in. Um, we already have the link now on YouTube, so you could just hit that notification so you'll be reminded when we are live. Thank you. So same week, same time next week, same time, Georgina will be doing something on eyes. Questions again. I will see you. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a very good one. That's a very, that's a good one. That's a good one. What a great way to end the session. I will see you next time. We will indeed. Um, no one is disappearing. Every time one disappears, someone's going to ask a question. Maria, the combo and the OTC and MEP course bought together will be 650. Oh, you're playing my mind now. Uh, maybe about, maybe about, you do get a discount if you're getting the combo course, but probably about, yeah, yeah, something of that sort because you have the combo course about 400, then you're going to get a discount on this. Yes, for everything together. It's about that. Maria Fazel, absolutely correct. Sarah says, see you then. We cannot wait. We cannot wait to see you then. Take care, everyone. Spread the word if you enjoyed the session. Get more people to join the session. It's a pleasure. Final words to the lovely Georgina, and then we can disappear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you ever so much, guys. Just make, um, we're going to do um, eyes next week. Just be prepared. There'll be pictures of some eyeballs as one of these questions, which is good because they always show a picture in the exam and they'll be like, well, what is this? Okay, so we'll be practicing some of that as well. Fantastic. Take care, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye. <laughs>